All right, here we are back on our little Ford Ranger. And here it is. Hi, Poppers. What you doing, girl? You cool kitty. So here we got, it's kind of got like lowrider wheels and tires on it. It's actually got a pretty nice interior. It's not bad. It's got one little problem in the seat right there, but it's pretty decent. It was kind of a grayish color. Grayish, silver, bluish, I don't know. But anyway, we've got a regular two barrel. And behind there we've got our distributor that we showed you in the uh, other video and there's the that collar that they cut off of there to make the vacuum work and so if you remember I had a uh, GM ignition module uh, screwed into that little plate right there well I couldn't get it to work because I think it's the different sine wave and it wouldn't link up correctly uh, it wasn't the sine wave of the module I think it was what it was accepting out of the, the distributor which is these wires here which is the orange and purple and then there's a black one there that's a ground so I went and got a, a DuraSpark uh, blue grommet and uh, proceeded to go ahead and and fix this thing the right way and uh, so you've got you've got a power wire here is your red and then your uh, white one here uh, the white one is 12 volts in crank and then uh, the other is the distributor and then uh, the green one of course is the coil negative there she is what you doing baby girl and uh, then so we got the regular two barrel and it's just a 2100 um, I had to cut the EGR valve off as that was the end of it was broken and pretty much runs pretty good uh, had to put a thermostat in it and a fuel pump fuel pump started leaking it was a engine mounted fuel pump and you'll notice there's quite a large cavity right here and oh that's by the way that's the wire that uh, that white wire right there is the one that's uh, power under crank and I just loosened this little nut on the starter relay and there's a there's a ground wire there that goes down to the frame that I don't need and then there's a power wire there that I don't need and I'll tell you why oh and I put a new blow motor in it the other one's squealing all right, so right here, this is all the stuff that made it the EEC system, feedback carburetor system. And so you've got you've got your idle control, which you can see the the connector just rotted away inside there. And you've got your stepper motor for the idle. This is mainly for air conditioning. And then there's your throttle position sensor right there which is mounted down there below that and then of course you got your distributor which is your TFI4 thick film and there's your ill-fated PCM there's your here's your EEC connector and there's looks like that's probably an EC relay and there's your 60 pin connector right there and then of course in here this is all the tab and tad solenoids and the barometric pressure or the map sensor I'm not sure what they called it look at all the electrical look at all the vacuum lines it's just piles of vacuum lines in this in this harness this is all vacuum harness and all these tab and tad solenoids. Oh, and there's a smog pump on there too, but you can see there's your TFI4 
connector. Uh, you've got that looks like probably a TP sensor. Let's see. Well, there's a bunch of junk in here. I don't know what that is. That may have been for the uh, uh, smog pump diverter valve. It may not be. I don't know. I don't. I just took all this out of there. Uh, one of these is for the uh, ECT sensor. And then on top of that, there's a vacuum canister. This must have run some of the functions, but this is one of the reasons why I wanted to get rid of this thing. But look at this. It's just full, that's full of rotten gas. It's just rotten gas. Nasty. So that's what this thing's all about here. So, in the previous video, we went through the head and and did all the valve adjustment and everything, and I've got everything running, and there's my baby again. Hi, poppers. It's Poppy. Hi, Poppy. What's he doing? You're going to smell something and run. It's stinky. Anyway, so there's, uh, there's all this junk down here that's going to be thrown in the garbage. And good riddance to it all. Basically, all this is converted back to a 77 Bobcat. Basically, there's the DuraSpark and then the regular 2.8 distributor. There's your uh, two barrel carburetor, and uh, pretty much everything right there is just all you need is spark and fuel. And I had good compression, 125. Uh, I did have to put a battery in it, which is just a little 40 and it's got an aftermarket cruise right there and there's a vacuum canister and also had to put a uh, brake booster valve and that's about it oh and there's a the new fuel pump that's way down there on the side of the engine I had to put a new fuel pump in it because the other one just started dumping out of the diaphragm and I think that's it for, for now. Looks like we've got a project done, finally, after a couple of years. I did put new radiator hoses and new heater hoses on it, so it blows good warm air. Air conditioning uh, it needs a charge. It's still R12, but, uh, you know, it's coming into winter, and I'm going to probably just sell this truck anyway, and I'll just let people... Uh, deal with it themselves. Whoever buys it, they can probably deal with it themselves. And I went through and uh, did the wiring harness. Uh, there's your your uh, air conditioning, and this right here is the uh, main harness. There's a couple of wires that I left open here, just in case I were to need something. I don't know that I would, but I went ahead and left that in there. Just in case, if I needed to strip that back and need 12 volts or ground, I don't think those are live anyway. I think they go to something else. But anyway, that's all she wrote. And we got another thumbs up for you. Thank you much for watching.